the 21st century has well-trained scientists, a global network of experts in anthropology, history and culture, and the latest technologies. There seems to be a conclusive explanation for everything, yet there are finds that leave researchers baffled. We present 10 incredible finds that scientists still can't explain. Are you fascinated by mysterious things and archaeological discoveries? Then give us a thumbs up, subscribe to Hidden Worlds, and join us on our journey. Imposing Buildings with Mysterious Origins Few people are familiar with the Kailasa Temple, yet the 18.5 meter high and 60 meter wide structure in the Indian state of Maharashtra is no less imposing than the Pyramids of Giza. For years, researchers assumed that it would take 18 years to build, until doubts arose. An estimated 400,000 tons of hard basalt had to be removed for the construction. At 12 working hours per day, that would be an incredible 5 tons of removal per hour, using only hammer and chisel. The construction time is not the only unresolved issue surrounding the Kailasa temple. Despite intensive excavations, scientists found no tools near the temple. How the narrow canals for the irrigation system were created is unclear. They are too narrow for a human, and mechanical drilling devices would not be invented until centuries later. Regardless of the many unanswered questions, historians agree on one thing. The Kailasa temple is an architectural masterpiece. The Clay Tablets of Glozel in 1924, a 17-year-old boy finds a cave containing artifacts in Glozel, France, and sets in motion one of the most controversial scientific debates of the 20th century. The amateur archaeologist Antonin Morlet wrote an article together with the finder Emile Fraden calling the site the oldest excavation site in the world. An amateur and a farm boy. Anthropologists remained unimpressed. Initial scientific investigations disagreed about the age of the artifacts. Opinions also differed on the authenticity. Later excavations in 1983 and 1995 used new technologies, but still came to different conclusions. An annual panel commemorates the excavation site. The organizers hope that one day they will be able to shed light on the matter. Whatever conclusion modern science comes to, one person will not live to see it. Fraden, who started it all, died in 2010 at the age of 103. Cemetery of the Fine People An inconspicuous piece of land in 1974 on the island of Sardinia, a farmer plows his field and comes across a find that makes the Italian Mediterranean island the center of archaeology overnight. Researchers uncovered sandstone sculptures that became known as the Giants of Monte Prama. The groundbreaking find shed new light on Sardinia's cultural status in the Bronze Age. Apparently, it was the local neuragic culture and not that of the ancient Greeks that first created freestanding sculptures to honor deceased aristocrats. Scientists unearthed thousands of relics until research funds ran out in 1979. Thirty years passed until archaeologists returned to the site in 2014. Ground-penetrating radar revealed eight hectares of land that had not yet been investigated. It remains to be seen what secrets the cemetery will reveal in the years to come. Mysterious Signs of an Ancient Culture It seems to be a normal day for workers in the Jordanian capital Amman, where they start building a highway to the city of Zaka in 1974. Their working day comes to an abrupt end after they come across an ancient excavation site. It was the beginning of investigations whose results shed new light on the history of the region. Scientists excavated numerous statues of different shapes. The finds included life-size full-body sculptures and busts, some of which had two heads. The limestone and clay figures seemed to have been buried ritually. It remained unclear who they were modeled on. Astonishment spread when the statues were dated to the 7th millennium BC. This made it possible to precisely classify the early Neolithic settlement there in the corresponding era. In addition, the statues found at Ayn Ghazal mark the beginning of artistic and sculptural craftsmanship in Mesopotamia. Tool with unclear function The Archaeological Museum of Heraklion in Crete counts special artifacts among its exhibits. They are huge axes that reach several meters in height and tower far above any human being. The double axe, the so-called labrys, played an important role in the Bronze Age. In the period from 3000 to 1450 BC, it was a tool for working the fields in the Minoan culture, which was mainly represented on the Greek island of Crete. Scientists are still unable to explain why the axes are oversized. They could not be used as tools, at least not by a person of normal height. 
are the huge axes of Minoans an indication of giants, an interesting theory that is doubted by researchers. They assume that the oversized double axes were created for the worship of Minoan deities. Scientists have not yet been able to find evidence for this purely symbolic function of the giant axes. Proof of the existence of giants The Odachi, a sword with a curved blade, dates back to 15th century Japan. The typical length of a blade was 1 meter. The find of the Norimitsu Odachi, whose length is 3.77 meters, is all the more astonishing. With a proud weight of 14.5 kilograms, it could not possibly have been wielded by a human. Is it another indication of the existence of giants? Unlike the giant axes of the Minoans, the purpose of the Norimitsu Odachi is unclear. Because of the long, awkward blade, it had to be carried on the back. Its popularity quickly declined and it disappeared from the hands of the troops. A symbolic function to honor war heroes is unlikely with the Odachi. Scholars speculated that a blacksmith once used the huge sword to demonstrate his craftsmanship. What the real purpose of the Norimitsu Odachi was remains a mystery. A Mysterious Linen Book The Liber Lintius is an old linen book in which a mummy was wrapped. In German-speaking countries, it's also called the Agrama Mummi in Binde. Agram is an obsolete name for the Croatian capital Zagreb, who is in possession of the mummy. The building speculator Michael von Barak brought it back from a trip to Egypt in 1849. Eighteen years later, when Barak had died, his brother bequeathed the mummy to the Agrama Museum. Researchers there examined the mummy bandage and recognized Etruscan writings. Twelve columns stretch across a 3.4-meter-long linen cloth and make up a ritual calendar. The book had been dated to 250 to 100 BC and wrapped around the wife of an Egyptian tailor. Was she wrapped in the writings for a specific reason? Did the linen book have a specific meaning? Or did the undertakers just run out of normal mummy bandages? Researchers are still working to answer these questions today. High Art or Clever Imitation The Lady of Elche is a bust found in 1897 in the town of the same name in Spain. It resides in the National Museum of Archaeology in Madrid. What is special about the Lady of Elche is the multicultural influence she displays. The shape of her face follows Greek aesthetics, while her clothing is clearly of Iberian origin. The jewelry points in a completely different direction and refers to the North African city of Carthage. Since its discovery, scholars have argued about its authenticity. Doubters cite the dating to the 5th or 4th century BC as evidence of a replica. How can a bust made of simple limestone, unprotected and exposed to weather, remain immaculately preserved for several decades? A question that does not matter to the people of Elche. They have been fighting for years for the return of the Lady of Elche to her hometown. Wrath of a Deity In the middle of the 19th century, workers found an imposing stone statue near the Mexican town of Cordinchan. It was dedicated to Tlaloc, one of the most important gods of the Aztec culture. The monolith, 7 meters high and weighing 152 tons, was exposed to the weather without protection. When researchers prepared it for the transport to the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City in 1964, they found it in perfect condition. Connoisseurs of Aztec culture were not surprised. After all, Tlaloc was the god of the tides and ruler of rain and wind. They were all the more concerned when they saw how quickly the stone statue was decaying in its new place. How could these few years take such a toll on a monolith that had survived several decades without damage? The answer seems obvious. By removing it from its original place of homage, the people had incurred the wrath of Tlaloc. Whatever is behind the statue's rapid decay, in 2014, anthropologists began restoring the imposing statue. Mayan Artifact or Clever Deception in 2011, a murmur went through the world when the discovery of numerous stone tablets in Mexico was announced. The artifacts were attributed to the Maya. This ancient advanced civilization was the talk of the town at the time. The Mayan calendar prophesied the end of the world in December 2012. Through the clay tablets, researchers and laypeople hoped to gain a deeper insight into the events that would await us at the end of 2012. Among the stone tablets was one that seemed to represent the cosmic being Cthulhu. It became famous through the American writer H.P. Lovecraft and was considered a fictional creation of the writer. Do the stone tablets found prove that Cthulhu is more than the invention of an author? If not, by whom and for what purpose were the stone tablets forged? These questions are still the subject of heated discussions between scientists and conspiracy theorists. 
It's astonishing how many finds science still cannot explain today. Is there an artifact we missed in our video? Tell us in a comment how you liked our video and what your theory is on the many open questions.